The deep voice, uh, if you're watching the video on my, on my left over here, is Josh Miller. Can you just tell us uh, who you are and what do you do? Uh, so, Josh Miller. I am also a partner here at FL Fuller Landau. Uh, again, started the same day as Mike, although became partner one year after him. <laughs> uh, and uh, basically, and in, in the firm, I, I'm on a client consulting capacity. Uh, I don't do a lot of compliance, although I understand it and have to deal with it, but I deal more with the day-to-day -day operations and problem solving for clients. In addition, from a firm aspect, not nearly as much as our managing partner, Mike, but uh, from a firm aspect, I also oversee the marketing and business development side of the firm, uh, which what used to be more traditional is certainly now more social media online and, and certainly podcasts sure. and, and blogs like this one. So yeah, just to add into that comment, the, the, the transition from marketing to marketing, okay, which is really the evolution of, of where we've gone, it has been an uphill battle because it, it, the profession itself is not, I mean the profession itself for years wasn't even allowed to market under, uh, you know, under, under the standards. It then evolved to the point where you could go that route but most partners never got that. It was a little bit of self-promotion and that was about it. So it's been an uphill battle trying to convince people that marketing needs to be done, the dollars need to be spent, the efforts need to be spent, and God forbid, because accountants need an answer today and be able to put the numbers together tomorrow, what's our return? And this has been some of the battle, I guess, so, that Josh so has been forced you're, with you're, over yeah, the last few years. You're giving me my next question. Which oh, it's exactly. a, and I didn't even read. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> which is exactly that. So. Uh, sales versus marketing, because I think that that's exactly what you're saying, or, or what both of you are saying, is that it started off by sales was, in, in, in the typical scenario, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's about referrals. It's about networking events, yep. you know, and, and just, you know, trying to be out there, uh, not necessarily the traditional knock on the door, have a cold calling, you know, uh, a boiler room in the back of the, mm -hmm. of the firm where everybody's calling. You know? I look at it, um, you know, maybe it's an obvious statement, but I look at it as, uh, business development is that sales. It's going out and bringing in business. But the marketing side is a visibility and branding effort. So the sales aspect, which is which can be the firm, is more of an individual. It's more of a, a Mike or a Josh or a Dave or, or whoever it might be. Where the marketing, the branding, the visibility side is the FL Fuller Landau. It's what do we do as a firm. And I'd say it very much goes in line with the shift as we go back to the transition of part of the FL history, at least in the years that we've been there, is FL used to be, the mentality was a lot of sole practitioner sharing space, <coughs> as many small <coughs> medium sized firms tend to be. Uh, but the, the shift that I'd like to think that we helped bring over is we didn't want that. We wanted to be a firm. We all wanted to drive in the same direction. So it kind of parallels the, the marketing and sales where we want the visibility, we want the one firm, just like we envision just like we think it's in the best interest of, of everybody. Okay. Yeah, and part, of, and part of that battle becomes institutionalizing clients, institutionalizing relationships. Um, it facilitates transition this time, or God forbid somebody gets sick, it, it's a security so what, blanket so what does that, that comes that mean? with it's, it. Sorry, what does that mean institutionalizing? So instead of it being my client, yeah. my, sorry, my yeah. client, my client list, uh, and I forget about what the emphasis is on the rest of the firm when I go to do something, the goal or the objective of institutionalization is that there are three, four, five people in the firm who know the client, who can touch the client, and if I get sick, if I pass away, if something happens, God forbid, I make a mistake. There's four other people or three other people here that have this relationship with the client that ultimately facilitates the client being a client of Fuller Landau as opposed to a client being a client of Michael Lee or Josh Miller. Now, having said that, this is a professional environment. It is, we are selling our brain. Lord knows we wouldn't make money if we sold our body. So, you know, that's for example. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can corroborate what Mike's saying about himself. So I, I pass no judgment. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, I, I think the, you know, the concept is the more you can get away from my client list to a firm client list, the easier it is to go out and start understanding the marketing, you know, the objectives that we're trying to do. And, and it's funny because I just thought of this while you were talking. If I look back at our first real strong forays into firm marketing, Okay, uh, our two biggest initiatives, the radio show yep. and the title sponsor for Cedar's Dragon Boat. And they both, both came around, around the same time. Right around the same time. And those were our first two efforts to try and do something different. Uh, and Lord knows we didn't want to be the title sponsor for another golf tournament. So we also wanted to do something that people get involved in. 
So with the radio show, the benefit of the radio show, as much as you know, he's got the face for radio. The, you know, the the the, the, the goes the, with Mike's body. Yeah, to <laughs> put the two of us together. It's some it's a package somewhere. Um, so hold, hold on a second. Let me just give a little <coughs> history to the to the listeners that don't know. So uh, FL for Orlando has been sponsoring a uh, local radio show on CJD 800, mm -hmm. and it airs on Monday nights. Monday nights <coughs> at 7 p.m. Today's Entrepreneur. Well, today's Entrepreneur. We saw our very first show was December 2009. Okay. And the inception of the show uh, is actually Mike's brainchild. Uh, he gave a talk to our international group overseas on, as managing partner, what keeps him awake at night. And uh, came back with the show and says, you know what? We deal only with entrepreneurs. We deal with AMA of the world, and there must be something that keeps everyone awake at night. We were already doing advertising on CJAD, so Mike and our then uh, business development director had a meeting with the program director at the time and pitched the show idea. Say, hey, can we get an hour and interview entrepreneurs, our clients or other, and let them tell the good, the bad, and the ugly of their story? And uh, CJD loved the idea. Program director got fired three weeks after, but thankfully, <laughs> thankfully the, the new one that's the still there. Shortly right thereafter, we lost my title, but that's a whole different yeah. story. Uh, and uh, and but that was the inception. And the reality is, we wanted to do something, as Mike said earlier, that was a little bit different. Uh, on CJD, at the 7 p.m. slot was a lot of call-in shows. Was a lot of you know tax call-in or whatever it was. And we didn't want to be that. We, we like to give back to the community. We want to ed help educate. And, uh, and to this day, we stay true to form. Yeah. And as we come up to our 200th episode on <coughs> May 14th, Crazy. Uh, we, uh, we still, I'd like to think, help educate uh, and help inspire Quebec entrepreneurs. Absolutely. And it's funny because it was born out of opportunity. The Great Recession uh, yeah. of the late May. 2000s uh, basically found, uh, at the time, radio stations hurting for advertising dollars. And we decided as part of our strategy to moving forward, we were doing Dragon Boat. Uh, we had just started doing Dragon Boat as the, as the title and sponsor okay, for what, Cedars. What is, okay, so. what is Dragon Boat? So Dragon Boat is the, is the uh, a marquee event for uh, CAN Support, which is a division of uh, Cedars Cancer Foundation. And we had been looking again to try and get an opportunity to get the that brand and the visibility out there. Um, without, you know, without spending the dollars that some of the big boys have while still getting visibility and while once again trying to do something that as a firm we would participate in. And I always say it's very easy to cut it. Yeah, I also think it's easy to cut a check. Yeah. Okay, at the end of the day, so by forcing, maybe, maybe some days it's forcing, it's not always <laughs> forcing, but by getting everybody to participate, they're actively involved in fundraising. They actually come and paddle. So, you know, we may have 40, 50, 60 people from the firm and or their families coming on a day where there's 800 people and 30 boats on the water. And, it, and it's a great event. And, and it really is about participation. When we looked at the radio show, how would this become, you know, as much as I'm sure his ego would have liked to have done it all alone, ultimately at the end of the day, how do we bring in, you know, other people? How do we bring in clients who started out as clients initially? How do we give them exposure? How do we give them some marketing time while doing the soft sell from our firm? And there was nobody better than Josh. I mean, I, I, if I go back to university, I think you won your radio oh, show in yeah, university. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did, I did it have was a lifelong about. dream, I guess, yeah, at yeah. the end of the day. So, so. But he's, you know, every week, you know, you're on for an hour. It's four or five hour it exercise is, between absolutely. finding the the, uh, the interviewees, finding what they're going to talk about, helping them get through some of the bugs and, and, and the jitters, uh, doing the advertising bits. You know, the whole thing takes a lot of time that nobody recognizes. It's an hundred percent. And it's hard but to it's keep fun, fresh. by the way. It's still fun. But it's hard to keep fresh. It's yeah. hard to keep fresh. And, and over nine years, I think you've done a very good job of changing the model and changing the formula and changing the style, even though program directors have come and gone. And, uh, you know, Dan Delmar has been pretty consistently yeah. there. But, you know, it, it's been a change. Again, the whole role of trying to do something participatory. Um, partially because we didn't necessarily have the dollars to just write the big checks and put our name, you know, sure. on the boards. Montreal Canadiens game. 